What is up my YouTube family? My name is Adam and this is Broke Man Finance. What a year it has been for Halion. There have been some ups and most recently some downs. It has been a roller coaster all year, a roller coaster of emotion, but I am not quite ready to get off this ride. In this video, we are going to discuss the run-up that Halion has had this past year. We're going to talk about some things that are helping the share price. We are going to discuss some things that are hurting the share price. And I'm going to give you my thoughts on what I think that share price is going to get to. So make sure you stick around to the very end so you can hear the good and the not so good. If you'll think back long ago, well not really that long ago, but it seems that way now. Tortoise acquisition, ticker symbol S-H-L-L. Oh, shell. When everything was good. I miss you, shell. Come back. Tortoise was formed in March of 2019, and little did we know that they were going to pick Hylion to be their little bitty baby in June the following year. On Friday, June 19th of 2020, the merger announcement was made, and Shell's share price went from $10 to $17 that following Monday. And oddly enough, we still seem to be at that same place. Nikola had blazed a path for Halion to profit land for all of its shareholders and really opened up the doors to a lot of these EV SPACs we saw that second half of 2020. And Tesla, pff, you know the run that they had. Everything seemed to be going so fine. I even uploaded a video on July 10th explaining why I didn't trust either company but more so Nikola, who I called a complete scam, even then. But I thought if either company had the potential for success, it was Hylion. Boy, did I take a beating in the comment section when I called out Nikola and I called out Hylion. People were literally sending me messages and comments, cussing me out. It was so bad that YouTube just flagged it immediately as inappropriate. I wish now I would have screenshotted all of them because boy, did they age well for me. However, as Nikola continued to turn into a complete dumpster fire, Hylion was moving and grooving all the way into the 50s. Hylion hit 55.85 on the 2nd of September, and at the time, the stock was up nearly 300% since the merger announcement on June 19th. If you've been following this channel for a little while, you may have seen this video because it's turned out to be my most viewed video of 2020, and that was a video on Hylion on, uh, the title of it was When to Sell Shell. I posted that video on August 28th, just a few days before that peak because there were rumors at the time about uh, the merger being completed by September 15th. And historically, if you look at Facebook, Uber, and a number of other companies, once they get listed, they tend to drop off in share price. We knew a lot of hype was baked into Hylion's share price. They were, not, they were not producing anything at the time. My advice at the time was to watch around that listing time. And if it's still uptrending, hold on for a second. But the moment you felt that it was downtrending or that you thought it had peaked, sell and come back at a better price point. You could have took those profits and offset that original cost, or you could have put everything back in and just bought more shares. But I had no idea that we would be back at $15 levels. But let's talk about that very thing. What is hurting Hylion right now and driving that share price down so much. Well, we're still in a bear market of sorts. People aren't buying as much as they normally would considering the circumstances. So what they're doing is we're saving money more than we typically do because we don't know what the hell's going on from day to day anymore. We'd, I don't really disagree with that. I think it's a good idea to save as much as you can considering. In fact, we haven't saved money like this since the Vietnam era. The last rate of savings that I saw was, and you can correct me in the comment section if you feel like it, was around 13%. Less goods being bought means less goods being transported. Less goods being transported means less business potentially for Halion. Halion has only released one quarterly report and it was terrible. They lost 48 cents per share. Now, 
analysts were expecting them to only lose 12 cents per share. It was like a 300% discrepancy. Bonita's Research, a Texas-based equity research firm and short seller, I might add, released a report in October that had an issue with Hylion's claim that its technology improves trucks' fuel efficiency anywhere from 10 to 30%. PAM Transportation Services allegedly showed that Hylion's product provides only a small percentage improvement in fuel efficiency, but they failed to define what a small percentage really means. Plus, the company claimed that it owned over 700 natural gas stations when in reality, and this probably bothered me the most out of everything, it owns zero. So did they just completely lie to investors? And then you throw in the fact that Healy and his team, well, they've been relatively quiet throughout this entire thing over the past three months since they got listed. Now, I'm not saying they owe us an explanation for every little thing. They, they, I hope they got time to do that. But with all the issues they seem to be having, the share price sinking like a rock, it would be nice to hear something good coming out of the company and get in front of this thing a little bit. Moving on to the good. The best thing Hylion has going on for them, and if something happens to this and it turns out to be BS, they are really gonna be in trouble and I'll probably jump ship myself. But it's the Hyper Truck ERX. This truck alone could be a complete game changer. It has the potential to disrupt the entire industry if it can do what Hylion claims that it can do. If not, it's a wrap. Combined with a fully electric drive train and a natural gas powered onboard generator to recharge the battery, the Hypertruck ERX will provide more than 1,000 miles of range. The powertrain also produces electricity locally at roughly 30% less than the average grid cost, which yields a seven year cost of ownership unmatched by any diesel, battery electric, or hydrogen fuel cell class eight truck under development. And they still have guys like Andrew Carr Jr. helping out on the board and as an advisor. I think his leadership and guidance can help tremendously as long as those products work the way they said they do. I don't think Card would have teamed up with Healy and his crew if they weren't on to something great. And if you don't know who Andrew Carr Jr. is, I'll put a link into above my head for a video I did a while back about the good news and why I think it was such good news for him joining the team. Lastly, they're young. They've only been listed for a few months. This is a mature company that's been around for years and years that have these all these problems all of a sudden showing up. They're having some growing pains and the way they respond to them and work through them will be a, a telling sign on what the future may hold for them. I think they're still on to something really great and I'm still very excited to see what they can do over the next few years. Personally, my thought is it's going to get worse before it gets better. I think we are going to see $12 a share and I think we'll see it pretty soon. I don't know if we'll hit $9 and get into that single digit range. It's certainly possible. Um, I hope not. I hope we start taking upwards, obviously. But if we do, hey, look at it as an opportunity. Uh, but I think we'll definitely hit $12 a share. But let's say you were in at 50 bucks a share and or that's what your average cost is, but you really believe in the company. Remember Netflix got, got all the way down to a dollar and look at where they're at now. So if you really believe in the company and you believe in the technology and the potential that they have, well then use that as an opportunity to keep averaging down. You can average down pretty quick at nine to 10, 11, $12 a share when you're above 50 currently. As for what I'm gonna do personally, well, this is by far my most speculative stock. But I do believe in the company and I do believe that, I, I do believe that they have some potential and my average cost isn't that crazy to be, I got in, no, I ain't gonna say I got in super early at like 10 and $12 a share, but I'm not nowhere near $50 either. So I feel pretty comfortable holding where I'm at and even averaging down on dips when I can. Uh, because I'm going to be in this for the next little while. I'm going to give them at least three years to get their crap together. If they can't, then I'll reassess at that time. And if I have to take some losses and try to earn it back in another play or in another position, it's all good. And in the meantime, I may just keep selling calls against it that I know uh, that share price is never going to hit and just average down that way too. 
but only time will tell. But for now, I've got a strong hand, so I'm going to keep holding out because I do think they're on to something good. There is something there. But again, I'm no financial advisor. I'm just a guy on YouTube. Until next time, I hope your stocks stay as green as Hylion is. I hope you stay safe, and I hope everyone out there takes care.